Hi, my name is Simon and I'm a 3D designer at Klo, Munich, Germany. I want you to show some of the basic techniques of lighting in Klo, as well as give you an overview how lights actually work. Why is it important to learn more about lighting and practice your skills? First of all, lights can shape your object slash garment. With a smart placement of lights, you get to see shadows at every wrinkle of your garment and the whole picture will have more depth and details. Also, it's possible to draw attention to special parts of your garment. You can highlight some areas because our eye always tends to look at the bright spots first. On top, your lighting will create an overall mood of your scene. It can be gloomy and dark, dramatic, flawless and perfect, or just represent a certain daytime or weather. In general, you can improve the level of details and quality of your final images a lot just with some basic knowledge about lighting. Therefore, we need to start with the basic rules of lights to understand how they work. Every light has different physical properties, which affect the look in our scene. Intensity is the most simple one. If you increase the level, it gets brighter and vice versa. The only thing which seems logic but you might forget about it when working in 3D is the inverse square falloff. If you double the distance of your light to your object, then it will only receive 25% of the light intensity. The next thing is the softness of your light, which is related to the scale of your light in relation to the object itself. In real life, you would just put a diffuser in front of your light source. This is not possible in glow but we can simply increase the scale to achieve the same result. So if your light is very small, then only a tiny bit of your object gets highlighted and it looks very contrasty and sharp. When you increase the scale a lot, you first get to notice that also the intensity will increase. We need to balance this out by decreasing its intensity number. What's more important is the softness of the light. The whole object is now more evenly illuminated. Comparing these two setups, we will notice another thing which has to do with the softness of the light. The shadow gets smoother when blazing a big light and gets sharper when only blazing a small light. If you want to create realistic lighting, I recommend you to mix different scale of lights just as in real life. What's also visible is the reflection of the light itself. Especially at glossy materials, for example metal, it can be a creative way to play with some nice reflections. We mostly know this from car commercial, but also for more reflective and glossy garments or trims, it's important to keep this potential in mind. The last physical property is the color of the light source. In real life, barely any light is purely white. The wavelength of each light is different. So it comes that candlelight looks orange, while neon light looks very cold and bluish. You might want to consider adding a very slight of tint to your light. Your eye will still see it as white, but it's the last step of photorealism. Or you want to create a certain mood, then you choose a more saturated color. But let's get more practical and dive into the lighting techniques in Glow. Glow comes with several kind of lights, which I don't gonna cover all of them. The dome light is activated by default and already gives you a great start to begin your lighting. For a quick and easy rendering, this can be already enough and create stunning Im images. In order to create our own lighting, I recommend you to turn it off for now. The most common and fastest light to render is the rectangle light, because it only emits light from one direction and it's comparable, comparable to a softbox in real life. Most of the time you're doing quite fine just with these lights, the directional light is also nice to create sunlight with hard shadows. You don't have to worry about scale, intensity and so on. The directional light is made for sharp lights with hard shadows. And the last important one is the sphere light. This one looks like a light bulb. It emits light to every direction. It's kind of useful to place it inside your jacket or hoodie if it gets too dark inside. 
To start, I simply place one rectangle light in front of the garment. I hide the visibility, but not the illumination to see the result. This is called flat lighting. If you increase the scale to make it more soft, then your garment will look flawless and elegant. The amount of light spread over your object is even, therefore you have fewer shadows and less contrast. Just to make it a bit more interesting, you can simply lift it and rotate the angle pointing towards the garment. You still keep the flawless look, but at least you get to see some shadows. My favorite one is the split lighting. You only use one key light from the side. This one looks very dark and dramatic, but the viewer is curious to look more closely because he's not able to see some areas because they are too dark. You can now create a fill light on top at the opposite direction, just to clean up the dark areas and to keep the lost information. In general, this lighting setup is also called low key. One level further would be the classic three-point light system. As the name says, we have now three lights arranged at three different locations. First, I move my fill light a bit more to the front, kind of a 45 degree angle next to the camera position. Then I place a rim light at the back of my garment to make it pop out from the back background and give it a nice bright outline. This one is very famous for product lighting and also for movies. You have a nice balance of shadows and don't lose any information of the image. So what's the best approach to start with the own lighting? As mentioned before, I would turn off the dome light first and start with an empty dark scene. Then place each light one after each other instead of creating all of them at once. If you are not sure what effect the light has on your garment, it's super helpful to temporarily colorize the light. Once you've placed the light, you can change the color back to neutral. Keep in mind that more lights will also increase the render time. And on top, more lights don't necessarily make your scene better. Actually, the opposite is the case. You will end up with a light mush with no real ambience. It can be a smart choice to keep your HDR light and bring it back later to your scene, after you've placed the lights. Once you're used to place your lights manually, you can keep the HDR light from the beginning on and just add the missing necessary lights to your setup. One thing to mention is that there is no perfect light setup which works from every camera angle. If you place a room light at the back, it will look nice at the front camera, but from the back side it's just too bright. In that case you need to come up with a new light arrangement for each camera position. Since Glow 6.0 it's possible to save all your render properties in an external file. This also includes the placed lights in your scene. So once you've came up with a nice lighting, you can apply this one easily for the whole product line you've created. That's all from my side. I hope you've enjoyed this short workshop and learned something new. Thank you for tuning in and have fun with the user conference and the following presentations.